Well, hello everybody. It's a Wednesday evening, and this is the service of Rock Creek Church uh, in China Spring, Texas. I'm Pastor Mark Griffin, and and uh, thank you for just uh, sharing this time with us tonight. We've had a few obstacles to overcome and get this started. We was hoping to be live on uh, uh, YouTube as well as Facebook, but we can upload that for you guys that can only view on YouTube a little later. But I'm glad that you that are with us are with us, and we're just gonna worship the Lord tonight, share the Word of God, pray, and and uh, believe God to just move in a mighty way. So uh, thank you for being with us. Let's pray ask God's presence tonight. Father, we just thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to be in your, your house and your word. And, and uh, God, we just thank you for your anointing. We just, uh, God, we commit this to you. We pray that you be glorified. Lord, we thank you that you go before us, make the crooked places straight. And, and I thank you that, God, we believe that we're going to reap a mighty harvest. Lord, we just pray that you just anoint everything done tonight. We commit it to you. Bless those that are viewing from their home tonight. We pray that you just touch every heart and every life. Whatever we need, God, whatever the situation is, we thank you that you're right there with us and you're ministering to us. And we give you glory and thanks for your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen. Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. Well, the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So let's sing about it. Let everything that hath breath Praise ye the Lord. Lord, we lift our voices together in one accord. If I'm breathing, well, I'm praising. So I'm praising you today. Let me pray the hat bell. Praise ye the Lord. Let me sits on the throne and uh, he's with us present with us tonight so let's uh, worship a little bit tonight amen hallelujah
just worship you tonight. We just thank you. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. Just say this will be the Lord. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Give him a hand of praise. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lynn. Hallelujah. Well, Mara's got a few things to tell you about tonight. So uh, listen to these things and uh, she kind of catches us up where we're at. So there's just a few things we want to share with y'all tonight. Uh, we do want to remind you that we are going to be on here for services, Facebook Live, Sunday mornings at 1030 and Wednesdays at 7. This will continue until we're given the right and authority to be able to meet again in person. We hope that's really soon. We're playing, praying and believing that is. But also we wanted to um, just thank y'all for being faithful in your tithing and the offerings that you're giving in your missions because that's so important to continue to do Amen. those things even when we're not being able to that's meet right. together. So we want to just thank y'all for being faithful. But also um, we wanted to let y'all know we do not have online giving at this time. So if you want to continue or you want to start giving that, you can send it to Rock Creek Church. It's P.O. Box 565. China Spring, Texas, 76633. Also, if you'd like to drop it off somewhere and meet up with the pastors, if that's what you would like to do or you want them to pick it up, you know, y'all can work it together. Um, you are more than welcome to call the church number. It's 254-744-6631. And again, we just want to thank y'all for everything you're doing. I know this isn't an easy thing to do. So thank y'all for just being faithful. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, give him another praise there at home, amen. Well, uh, this is a this is a challenge, of course, and and uh, uh, to do this in this time, we would sure rather you guys be with us. But uh, we're so thankful that we do have this uh, uh, opportunity to uh, have media here where we can get into your homes, and and uh, it was uh, some hurdles to overcome tonight, but we're gonna uh, uh, fine tune this and and uh, get it uh, better and better as we go. And hopefully it won't be that long. We'll be together uh, face to face again. But uh, as Marlo was just sharing about the offering, why don't we just take time to uh, uh, give our offering tonight. And uh, uh, we just, again, I want to say thank you for being faithful to the Lord and for uh, uh, being faithful to give unto him. And, and we know that uh, you're faithful people and you believe in this. So we're going we're gonna to do that tonight. So if you've got your offering in your hand, if you've already sent it, just lift your hand up as if you... You're just uh, speaking toward that because there's no distance in the spirit. And uh, let's pray over this. It's given tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you so much for that which is given tonight. We thank you that, God, you've given into our hand and our life so that we might go forth, Father God, and and uh, do that which is good, Lord, and, and with, with what you've given us. We give our portion and we give it cheerfully, Lord. And we thank you tonight for it. And we just uh, praise you and we thank you, God, that you're working with that which we put into your hands as the body of Christ upon the earth. So would y'all just say this with me? Let's just proclaim this in prayer tonight and say, in the name of Jesus, I plant this seed in the house of God, in the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, it will go forth and do your work. Hallelujah. In your house, in the kingdom, and my house. And it will bring forth great and mighty harvest. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We'll give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we'll put that in right now. And uh, glory to God. Hope y'all are, are doing well there. And we uh, we uh, thank you for the feedback that we've had on Sunday service. And for those of you getting to, to tune in. And hey, we're going to do whatever we got to do to just keep communications going. We are the family of God. And, and we're here for one another. And so... Uh, let's just uh, keep, uh, it, it just thrills me when I hear about you guys uh, staying in contact with one another, uh, helping each other out. I think that's so important. So so uh, keep those things going and let's uh, stay connected as a body of Christ. And what a time to reach out to the world as well and uh, touch those who may not know Jesus or walk with him like you do. So, so uh, take this time to uh, uh, minister to those around you as well and to, to share the love of Christ. So uh, tonight uh, I'm going to share a message uh, with you a short message i'm gonna move through it pretty quickly and uh then we're gonna do something because what we always do on wednesday nights as y'all y'all know that that come to the church is that uh, we usually have prayer meeting from 6 30 to 7 and then we start service at 7 and we don't want to uh, quit having that prayer time and so uh tonight what i'm going to do i'm going to share a message and a lot of it is just a uh, giving us the instructions of how we're going to uh, come together in prayer because uh, you know i preach sunday about 
uh, praying and uh, these are the things we should do, but we need to do it now. And, and I know that you've been doing that on your time, but I think it's so important that we have corporate prayer times. And corporate prayer is not just meaning that, that we come together and everybody pray whatever they want to pray. It's a time when we come together and specifically pray about the same things at the same time corporately. And I think with, because the Bible says we need two or three will agree on earth is touching anything, it shall be done unto them. And so we're going to take uh, uh, the authority that Jesus has given us in prayer tonight and bring it forth. I believe we can we can affect things in our world. And so so I am thankful for the opportunity and the, the blessing we have of having prayer and uh, communication with the Lord. And prayer changes things. Anybody out there agree with me? Amen. Amen. I guarantee you, if you love the Lord, if you know Jesus, it's uh, somewhere along the line, somebody prayed for you. So thank God for, for praying people. And, and we can change. We can change the complexion of this whole uh, situation. Uh, I believe that, that uh, this thing, uh, this coronavirus and all the situation in our nation and the world's going through right now, it will come to a speedier end because of the prayers of God's people. I mean, y'all believe that. I believe that's the truth. So we as the people of God, you know, what we've been studying there in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, that's us, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said he would hear from heaven. He'd heal our land. And so, man, it's, a, it's what we should be doing right now. And so we're going to build up to that, uh, that prayer time. What I'm going to share with you tonight for a few minutes, is I'm calling this, Christ in the crisis. How many of y'all believe that uh, uh, we, uh, we are the body of Christ? And we know that what people really need in this crisis we're going through is Christ. It's Jesus. Amen? And, uh, but how is that going to happen? It's going to be through the body of Christ. And so I'm going to talk to you about that and what our role is really at this hour and this season that we're living in. But before we do that, I want us to just take time to encourage you a little bit tonight. I want you, you to know that you're not going through this alone. I mean, if, uh, it may seem like you haven't been able to, to do hardly anything. You that are out of jobs or, or secluded in your homes, isolated in your homes with your family, uh, God give you patience with your family. Amen. <laughs> and thank God for family. But we're getting to know each other in a lot of ways. Amen. But uh, thank God for this and take advantage of that time. But but I want you to know that you're not alone and God is with you. Just want to remind you what the Word of God says. In Isaiah 26, 3, uh, he says this, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Hallelujah. So keep your mind on the things of God, not on the, all the circumstances. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Donna's favorite scripture, my wife, she says, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So trust in him. We can safely trust in the Lord. I love this is one of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. God's with us, y'all. Amen. God's with us. Fear thou not, for I'm with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'll tell you what, if God's righteousness is holding us up, we, we're going to stand. Amen. So don't fear tonight. Uh, trust in the Lord and, and lean upon him. Uh, Psalms 86 and 7 says, In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Hallelujah. And we're going to call on him tonight, as you've been doing, I know, in, in your home and in your life. Deuteronomy 33 and 27, I love this scripture. It says, The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemy before you, saying, Destroy him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's holding you up tonight with his everlasting arms. That means uh, they don't get tired. They're not going to they're not going to give their hold up. They're going to be under you and, and holding us all up uh, through this time till we get through it. And I like that part that says he's driving out the enemy. You know, this coronavirus thing, it's not of God. You know, I, I love, I heard the president even say this. And I, and I, I want to say, oh, yes, amen. Because he said, he said uh, this uh, situation we're going through, this act of God. And he said, well, that's what some people call it. I don't believe it's an act of, uh, act of God. No, it's not. It's an act of the enemy. And, uh, you know, we could get into all that and we just say this, that, that God created everything perfect and, and in the beginning, but 
we as man, we failed and loosed all the, the uh, uh, stuff into the world. It's a fallen world that we live in. But thank God that's why Jesus came to redeem us from the curse. And because Jesus came, I'm telling you, we've got the right to stand and uh, come against the enemy. And, and these things are from the enemy. And so we're going to come against them later tonight in prayer. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will not leave us in this season. He's going to stay with us through the end. And Psalm 91, you know, I've encouraged you all to read it daily. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place, the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He goes on to say that he'll deliver us from the noise and pestilence. And, and that noise and pestilence, that, that pestilence is what we're going through. He said he will deliver us. It says, A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And so we've got great and mighty promises. And I just want to encourage you tonight to let you know that God is with you. He's on your side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? We're going to make it through. This thing is not going to last forever. And uh, uh, in Jesus' name, it's on the way out quickly. And uh, But I know this. If God's people will pray, we can move that thing out of here quicker than what the enemy had planned. So in Jesus' name, we're going to take authority tonight. Now, people, I said people need Christ in a, in a crisis. And that's exactly what the greatest need in the world is. And I mentioned it a while ago. Let me just reiterate this. That if we are the body of Christ upon the earth, then it's our hands, our voice, our actions that God is going to use to reach them. And uh, we've, got to, we've got to do our part. We've got a role to play in this. You say, well, oh, well it's all up to God. We're just waiting on, on God to move this out of the way. Well, that's true. It's the power of God and the force of God released. But I'll tell you, Jesus released the power, and there's certain things that he put into our hands to do. That's why God said pray. Amen? He told us to pray. In, uh, in other words, prayer makes a difference. And so that's why we need to do our part. So I want to just tell you tonight what our role as, as the body of Christ, I believe, is in this crisis that we're going through right now and how we bring Christ in their crisis and Christ in our crisis. Amen? First, there's the natural part. And I want to encourage you tonight that even though the world seems to be crazy, I mean, I, I went uh, uh, my only visit to the grocery store this this week uh, today, and uh, there's still only about ten rolls of toilet paper there. Thank God I got me one. But but uh, you know we're all dealing with those limitations and craziness of the world, and and uh, but and you can be really tempted to uh, lose your patience, lose your cool as you see people not quite acting like they should. I'm sure none of your family's been that way, but but hey, hey, uh, uh, people uh, lose it when when they're under pressure sometimes. But what we have to do, the first thing we have to do in the natural, and first of all, I'm gonna take a look at what we need to do is the, the role of body of Christ in the natural, and that's to exemplify His love. We've got to be an example of Christ's love, and what, what does that mean? Just love people, don't trash people. Amen. You know, uh, you're watching on Facebook tonight. You can, I'm sure everyone can scroll down your Facebook. You can see some great things on there. And then you can see where people are just, just taking off and, and, and on somebody and, and just letting them know how, how sorry they were. That's the world we live in. But no matter what happens, even if you're the target of that, I want to tell you what we need to do is love people. Didn't Jesus say let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, so exemplify that by your love for people, no matter uh, how uh, they treat you or what they give out. Give love back to them. Love wins. Amen. And the, the next thing we can do in the natural is care for people. Amen. Uh, if God's put something in your hand to be able to share and, and you have it in your head. God, God can't. You, he doesn't expect you to give anything you don't have. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be giving anybody a million dollars tomorrow. I can tell you that because I don't have a million dollars. Unless God, uh, tonight, as you drive to my house and, and uh, uh, give me a million dollars, of course, I'll, we'll keep our six foot away. I don't know if you're coming with a million dollars. I'll probably shake your hand. But anyway, but anyway if you, you bring me a million dollars, God puts on my heart to give it somebody. That's about the only way that, that I'm going to be giving out a million dollars tomorrow. But it's not in my hand. 
But what God has put in my hand, I need to make available and say, you know what, can I bless somebody with this? God, you've blessed me, you've given me abundance in this, so can I bless somebody with something? We need to look for those opportunities to care for what for one another in this season, in this time. That's part of the role of the body of Christ. And that's the natural part. Love people. Care for people. Amen. Be giving. That's what God does. God so loved the world what he gave his only begotten son. So be caring. Be giving. Be loving. And now the spiritual part. The spiritual part of our role as the body of Christ in this crisis is this. To pray. And I have to go back to, to 2 Chronicles again. 7 14. If my people, that's us. Amen. Who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Amen. And turn from their wicked ways. Then, he says, I'll hear from heaven and I'll hear their, or heal their land. So praise God. It, you know, uh, I thank God for leading us to that scripture. And I know that, that uh, we've been on it for a while here, but there's just such depth in it that applies to our season right now we're in with this virus going on. You know, uh, you say, okay, we're going to pray. So I want to just break down what really prayer consists of. And I want you to know what, what praying really is. It's not just uh, getting down on your knees. It's not just a, a, a talking to God. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in prayer. Prayer's a two-way street for one thing. It's a communication. It's, a, it's talking and listening. That's why we need to, to read the Word and meditate on the Word because that's God's voice to us in these days and time. You see, we read the Word. The Word is spirit and life. And the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is upon that word because it's anointed and he makes it alive within us. And so we hear the voice of God through his word and through the confirmation. As we meditate upon the word, God can reveal all kinds of things to us. And he'll never reveal anything to us that does not line up with his word. So take time to meditate upon on, on the word of God and know that it's a two-way communication. Prayer is also praise and thanksgiving. Amen. What do we do tonight before we share the word? We, we praised him. We gave him thanks, you know. And, and the Bible says, you know, in, in Psalm 104, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. And, and uh, also prayer is a petition. It's a time that we ask God for the things that we desire. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says this, be careful for nothing. Amen. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. That's what we need to do. God wants us requesting. God wants us asking. God, you know, the Bible says in another place, uh, asking, uh, uh, Ask and you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. It says in another place, uh, we have not because we ask not. So we need to bring God our request and ask. And that, so that's what we're going to do tonight by our, our, our praise and our petition. Also, prayer is proclamation. You know, Abraham was the example. Abraham called those things that were not as though they were. And we all know the power of words. Uh, God told us in his word that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So we need to, we need to proclaim those things and speak the word over those things and, and uh, uh, just stand upon what his word says rather than the word of the world. Amen. So stand upon the word, proclaim his word over situations that, that you've been believing for. And, uh, and lastly, this is what we need to do in prayer is this. We've got to exercise faith. And what is faith? Faith is simply believing until the answer comes. It's what we do in the meantime. You know, I, this may shock you, but when we get to heaven, we won't have to have faith anymore because we're not believing for any. It's, it will all be right there in front of us. But the unique thing about this life on this earth is, is we can't see God in a physical sense every day. We can't touch, taste, feel him physically. Oh, but you sure can spiritually. Amen? You can spiritually. And how, how do you do that? By faith. You know what? You can. I've experienced enough of God, and most of you have too. God's done enough for you in your life that there is no, there is no argument that can ever convince me that he is not real because of the way he's changed my life, the way he's answered prayer, 
all the things he's done for us, for our church, for our family. And you know what? I'm still believing for some things. Some things I've been praying, you know, I prayed two days for and got it. Some, sometimes I prayed and immediately the thing was answered. There's other things in our life right now we are praying for and we've been praying for for years. We haven't seen the result, the request that we're asking for yet. But you know what? We have faith and believe. Why? Because we have God's word on it. And his word says that his promises are yea and amen. That means, that means uh, you can count on them. And so if you'll just believe, he can bring those things about. So the faith part, we've got to exercise faith. We've got to believe until the answer comes. It's what we do in the meantime. And you know, we, we, uh, we've really been blessed with, with something here. Uh, and Jesus has sent us so much help of what we can use in these days and times as we, as we uh, pray and we, we uh, petition God for things. And we, we have to realize that we have been trusted with some authority in this life because Jesus said, I give you the keys. Amen. He says that uh, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You know what? God wants things on earth to be as they are in heaven. And I can tell you tonight, there is no coronavirus in heaven. Amen? So when we pray tonight, we've got something to stand on the Word of God. We can come against this thing and know that God is releasing and sending forth the work that needs to be done. You know, Jesus said, uh, the Bible tells us that he, after he was uh, uh, crucified, put in the tomb, that, that three days, it says that he went down into hell. He took the keys away from the enemy, the keys of, of death, hell, and the grave. But I want to tell you, he gave us a set of keys also. I want you to turn over to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 with me. Matthew 16 and 19. Hallelujah. Jesus talking to Peter, and this was the famous conference. Uh, conversation was that uh, who do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But, but uh, uh, listen to what he says here in verse 18 and 19. It says, And I, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, he was talking to Peter. We knew we know Peter was the one that preached on the day of Pentecost, and, and 3,000 and more got, got saved. So Jesus was talking to Peter, but I want to tell you what he was really saying was, Upon this rock, Jesus was saying, I am the rock. I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But then right after that, he describes something. He says, and I will give unto thee. Who's he talking about? The church. Amen? I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And this is how they work. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let me tell you. When, if somebody trusts you enough, if your boss, if you don't own the company and your boss has given you a set of keys to get in and out of the doors at your workplace, you can be guaranteed to something. They trust you to a certain degree. And they believe that you're going to know who to let in and who not to let in. Now, Marla works at the drive through at a certain uh, uh, credit union here in town, and she goes in early. She's one of the earliest crews, so she has a set of keys. And they would never give her those set of keys or if, if, she, if they thought she's going to let all of her cousins and all of her, her nephews and everybody else uh, uh, come into the drive through and just help themselves to what's there. A great idea. But anyway, but anyway, that's not going to happen. Why? Because they gave her the keys and know they can trust her with what's allowed in and what she keeps out. See, that's what Jesus has given us. He trusts us to give, give us the keys to the kingdom. So what he's saying is here while you're on earth, I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some, some uh, authority here. And how do we exercise authority? How do we turn the key? It's, it's by our faith and by our prayers. That's what we're going to use tonight. You know, I've got a gate up here on my property. And, and uh, if you didn't know you're at our home tonight, welcome to our house. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I've got a lock on that gate. And, uh, you know, uh, those that have a lock on that gate can determine what comes in and what comes out. And it's up to me to determine uh what comes in and lock out what I don't want in. And so I have authority with whoever I give a key to, they have that same right. And that's the same thing Jesus is doing. He is allowing us to some, some authority to say what we're going to allow in and what we're going to keep out. And I will tell you, it certainly applies to what we're going through right now in this world with this virus situation. You know, I was thinking, I was talking to a 
to another minister friend and, and uh, uh, one of my authorities, and, and they mentioned this, and then I looked it up myself to, to see, but it's interesting that, that this virus is called a coronavirus. Many of you probably have looked this up and seen this, but the word corona uh, actually means an extended part of a crown, like the tips of a crown. They also describe uh, like when there's an eclipse of the, of the sun, the, the rays that shoot out from the edge, that's called a, a, a corona. And uh, it's interesting to me that, that the word to describe this uh, is, is that of associated with a crown. Because how many of y'all know that the word clearly tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the air? principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. I want to tell you, I believe with all my heart, this is a spiritual warfare situation that was manifested in the natural. That's what this coronavirus is about. And it's just the enemy uh, wanting to uh, come down with some some uh, uh, hellish uh, power of the air uh, to afflict men, to kill as many as possible. But you know what? We have the greater prince. Uh, that's a principality. We have the Prince of Peace. We have the Healer. We have the, the Prince that is Jesus Christ, the Prince of Heaven. And so I want to tell you that we are greater. The greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. And the enemy is not. We declare tonight the enemy is not going to have His way. We have our authority. And we have His Word to stand on. It's not just the, the fact that, okay, we're going to uh, tell Satan to leave. We have God's Word on it. There in Psalm 91, you remember we quoted earlier, the Bible tells us that no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Now, what does that mean? That means this, that y'all, we've got the power, we've got the keys to keep out and we've got the power to, to uh, let in. Why don't we let in the word and why don't we keep out the enemy? Why don't we let in faith and why don't we let out fear? Amen, keep it out in Jesus' name. And we do that by, by getting in the word, by praying, by doing these things, loving each other, all this is a combination of, of setting ourselves in a place to be able to take authority over the enemy. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray tonight and uh, uh, believe God to just touch uh, this situation that we're living in tonight. Now, let me tell you, we're going to pray tonight. And uh, who knows? You may wake up and say, it's unbelievable. The, the dip of this disease has, has dipped down an unbelievable rate. Praise God. God's people pray. It may take longer than that. But you know what? When we pray, we've got God's word on what he said he would do. We've got his promises as the family of God. You see, you see, personally, I've already been out on my land. You know what I'm praying? There ain't no plague coming down my dwelling. It's not, it's not touching my family. You as the church of Rock Creek Church, I've been praying that over you. No plague comes down your dwelling. Amen. Now that doesn't mean you're a, a failure in faith if you got hit with this. Look, sometimes the Bible says. Jesus told us that in this life you shall have tribulation. Tribulation is going to come. If you've been hit by it, we're going to grieve for healing for you tonight. So don't be dismayed. Whatever state you're in with this, uh, in Jesus' name, you're going to be restored. If you've lost a job, we're going to agree that that be restored tonight. So, so we're going to use these things we've talked about. And we, we said what we need to do in the natural. Love people. We need to uh, uh, share ourselves and, and give unto people. But we also, in the spirit, we need to attack this thing in prayer. So that's what we're going to do. You know, all over uh, where you are in your house here, uh, just let y'all be led in spirit, whether you want to stand with me or sit. But we're just going to begin to pray and pray corporately. I'm just going to, uh, uh, just as I pray tonight, agree with me. And, and uh, uh, let's pray about these things as we, as we come uh, to them right now. So why don't we just uh, begin doing that? I'm going to turn back over here to Second Chronicles because I want to just use that as a base of our prayer tonight. So let's give him thanks. We enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Father, we just thank you tonight. God, we praise you. We glorify you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you that, God, we're not alone. We thank you, God, that greater is you. Lord, greater is you. Greater is you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There is no power of the enemy that can compare with your power. And Lord, even though this thing has touched lives has attacked situations, has attacked not only physical situations, but, but financial and physical situations, or financial and emotionally in every way. Father, we thank you tonight that we know the greater one is still over our lives. We are the people called by your name. So in the name of Jesus, I thank you that there's a line to be drawn. 
And so we draw the line tonight and we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for those who have been protected. Thank you for those that have been healed. Thank you for those who have experienced the touch of the Lord and Lord are going to. We thank you in advance, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. So we praise you tonight and we glorify you for who you are. And we know that you are what we need. We need Christ in the crisis. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Lord, we also humble ourselves. We humble ourselves by coming to you together tonight. And Lord, we just proclaim to you, we need you, God. We can, we're not all that. We can't do it ourselves, but we need you, God. So we call out to you, Lord, we ask you to intervene. Uh, hear the cry of our heart tonight and touch these situations. Manifest your power. Manifest your glory. And we just uh, come to you humbly knowing that, God, it is you that does the work. Thank you for letting us be vessels. Thank you for letting us carry the, some keys. And so, Lord, we exercise that tonight, and we thank you for that. God, we're here praying. Your word, your word said to pray, so we're praying. We're communicating with you. And, Lord, we're seeking your face tonight. We're seeking you because, Lord, we're not just seeking the answers. Lord, we, we desire the answers. We're letting our requests be made known. But, God, we're also seeking you. We're seeking your face. We want relationship with you because, Lord, ultimately we know that, God, if we're close to you, that we're close to all the access of everything we need. But, Lord, we, I, I tell you tonight, Lord, that, God, I, I've experienced enough of your goodness, and so has probably everybody on the other side of, of this, uh, this camera here. Lord, we have experienced so much of your goodness. It wouldn't matter if we, we didn't receive one, uh, one other thing from you. Lord, we'd still serve you because you're that good. We thank you. But, Lord, you're going to bless us. You're going to help us. You're going to heal us. You're going to save us. You're going to bring us out because that's who you are. You're good. And we thank you, Lord, for it tonight. So, Lord, we seek your face. And, Lord, we pray, God, we pray you'd help us to, to turn from any wicked way within us. God, we pray again that if we failed you in any way, God, that you'd help us to turn, to repent. And, Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you would just receive our heart's cry tonight. Forgive us our sins. Wash us. Cleanse us by your blood. And, Lord, we receive uh, that cleansing power tonight for anything, God, that, that we have let uh, come up and, and bring any separation between us and you. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I just thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we're going to pray according to your word. And your word says in 1 Timothy 2 and 2 that it says that we should make prayer for kings and all those that are in authority. It says, first do this. So in the name of Jesus, right now, we pray. We agree in prayer for our president, President Trump, for all those, God, uh, in any kind of leadership position, our Senate, our Congress, uh, all those in authority, to the governors, to the local uh, representative, to the mayors of the cities, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for anointing upon their leadership. We pray that, God, that you would just uh, let them receive godly counsel. Let them uh, be hunger-free for the word. And, God, we pray that you would help them going forward, that, God, they'd be able to, to see the solution that you have. God, we pray that you'd block the hearing that, God, the enemy wants them to hear, but let them hear your word. Let them hear the voice of your spirit, and we thank you for that. We pray in the name of Jesus right now for the sick, and we thank you, Jesus, that we know that you're the healer. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and you, you said by your stripes, we are healed. It says in another place that we were healed. Jesus, when you, when you took those lashes upon your back, you paid for the healing. So I speak right now to everyone that's been hit by this virus or any other sickness. And I, I speak to that sickness and I command it to lose, lose its grip upon that body in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just agree in the name of Jesus for healing virtue of Christ. Hallelujah. To be released, God. And we thank you. If you're, if you're there in your living room and, and you're sick right now, just stretch your hand uh, uh, toward uh, that screen right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray it be transferred. That healing virtue of Christ be transferred now in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. We thank you for the power of the blood. We thank you that you're a healer, Lord. And we receive that healing in Jesus' name by faith for those that are sick. God, we pray for a covering of the blood, that you'd cover our households. And God, uh, uh, that Lord, no, no other sickness could come in, in Jesus' name. We just draw a line, in Jesus' name, that this thing loses its effect on our families, on our church family, upon all those that are connected, our, our workforce, in Jesus' name. We draw a bloodline in the name of Jesus. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bind, we bind 
this old spirit. We bind this, uh, this attack, this plague that has come upon our nation, upon the world. Lord, we just come together and we agree as the body of Christ tonight. Uh, we come with the binding keys that Jesus, you've given us. And we command this thing to, to be diminished, to be destroyed, to leave in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the authority of your word. We thank you for the authority, God, that we stand in tonight. And we give you praise and we give you glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for everyone that's watching tonight. I pray that whatever the situations are in their life, maybe the situations they're going uh, dealing with right now have nothing to do with the virus situation. But, Lord, I thank you that you're, you're near us and you're tender to us and you know uh, what's going on in our lives. And I just ask for the help of the, the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Just move and touch lives and hearts. Lord, just move in them. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for touching every need and every situation. And I thank you for the power, God. Thank you for the faith that is being released, God. As we look in your word tonight and we, we pray together tonight, thank you, Father God, that you're loosing help forth. Hallelujah. And, and right now, Father, I pray if there's anybody watching this right now, that, Lord, they, they in all honesty, they, they don't know where they are with you. Or maybe they know they're not right with you. God, I don't ever want to end one of these without giving the opportunity for somebody to come to know you. So in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray right now for them. Y'all just uh, pray with me and you at home and here and, and all of you. Let's just make sure, let's, let's pray this dedication to the Lord again. If, if you don't know Jesus, if you'll say this prayer in all of your heart, mean it with all of your heart, Jesus will come to where you are. He'll give you a new beginning. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll make you whole. He'll give you peace. So can we pray this out loud together? Say this, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my heart tonight. I receive your word. And Lord, I want to make sure that I'm right with you. Jesus, you are the son of God. You were raised from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, that I realize that. Now I confess you as Lord and I receive you as Lord. God, every place I fell, forgive me, cleanse me, come in, wash me, make me new. And I thank you, Lord, for a new beginning in you. Thank you for a fresh start. And I thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just, we just thank you again. Lord, we just praise you tonight. We just give you glory. Hallelujah. There's none like you. We just uh, we just uh, offer up our thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we started with thanksgiving and praise. We're going to end with thanksgiving and praise because we know you watch over your word and perform it. We know that God, uh, all the promises are yes and amen. So Lord, we receive them tonight. We believe because we prayed in agreement together, there is a mighty force loose. loose to, and, and Lord, I thank you that this thing is being pushed back. Now, Lord, we trust your timing and Lord, at your authority. And so, Lord, we've done our part, I believe, and we'll continue to do that till we see this thing. Lord, we're going to pray and believe till the answer comes, Lord, just like we do in every other need of our life. So I thank you, Lord, that we're going to stay on your word. We're going to stay in prayer. We're going to stay in love, and we're going to see mighty things happen in this day and time. We give you glory. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said amen and amen. You know, prayer works. I want to just give you a couple of praise reports. Before we leave you uh, tonight, uh, I thank God. You know, we prayed for different things. We prayed for uh, my wife, Donna. She went in for some testing and to check some levels of some things. Everything come back great. Praise God. Thank God for the glory of God. Good report there. Uh, Lynn, my brother, went in for some testing on his heart and, and uh, could have been major things there, but everything came back uh, good. Said, hey, we'll see you down the road. So praise God for that answer prayer. Also, we was talking to uh, uh, Sister Donna Williams, and I know she's been going through a, a lot, but uh, this particular thing they were looking at, they tested and, and good reports came back. Praise God. And so uh, over and over, I think also Sister Edna's sister was touched. She was dealing with some things. Is that right, sweetheart? And so so I want to tell you, God's doing things. God's answering prayer. And and so keep praying, keep believing, and uh, we'll see God do a mighty thing. You know, I really believe that uh, this whole thing is going to really backfire in the enemy's face. 
uh, you know, we, we've had to make adjustments. Uh, I apologize again. We, we were not live on uh, YouTube tonight, but we just discovered that because of all, probably because of all the, the use of YouTube, uh, the requirements for live video has been upped. And I think you have to have a thousand subscribers. So uh, we want to encourage you, please subscribe to, to this. So that help us reach that number. But, uh, uh, you know, if not, we'll still have it on YouTube at a later time, but we will be live on uh, uh, Facebook and we'll continue to do this for every service uh, until we get to meet together again. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, me and Pastor Donald. We love you guys and we appreciate you taking time to be with us tonight. Uh, let's let's uh, love love them out there, Amen. Let's uh, let's show them that that Christ is there in their crisis, and so so thank you for being with us tonight. God bless you, and uh, we'll uh, be talking to you and see you again on Sunday. God bless you.